Good morning, everyone. Before I get started on why we're here, you know, as I look out into the crowd, I just wish that the families of gun violence in this city got this much attention because that's who really deserves the amount of attention that we're giving to this particular incident. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about Jesse Smiley officially being arrested. I'll place his mug shot on the screen before you. The charges that he has on his back, or at least the charge in this particular case, is disorderly conduct for filing a false police report. This is a class four felony. He could do between one and three years in the penitentiary. He may get less time than that. He may even get off. I'm not really sure how, because... Usually, in cases like this, you'd be able to get less time if you snitch, basically. But who is it to snitch on? He is the ringleader. Let me back up a little bit to explain what's going on and give you a brief recap. Let me get into all of what was said in the press conference today. And if you want to see that full press conference, I'll place that in the description box below. We all know the story. He staged a fake hate crime outside of his house. He hired these two big Nigerian bodybuilders to fake beat him up because... He sent a fake letter to himself, which did not get enough attention. He thought that it was a letter with some white substance on the inside, a threatening homophobic message that that would just make the news and it would really get a lot of attention. It didn't, so he does a fake hate crime. And now he's about to go to the penitentiary instead. Some were trying to defend him, talking about, well, he was doing this for a righteous cause. He was just trying to bring a light to, you know, all those who are affected by the Trump supporters and MAGA hat wearers who he was trying to blame for the hate crime. But the reality is he was not getting paid enough on his show Empire, according to him. So he wanted to get more money. That was the whole reason. Now, I'm not really sure how staging the fake hate crime will make you get more money on your TV show, but that was a thought process. Now, hear this out. He's getting paid $65,000 per episode, and you have about 18 episodes per season. So you're talking about almost $1.2 million per season, not even including what he does on the side, which is singing, dancing. He has an album coming out, all kind of stuff like that. So this is not a poor guy. His family has money. So I'm not really sure what you're spending the money on. You don't have any kids. You're not married. So what are we spending the money on? And to get back to the money, he only paid these big Nigerian bodybuilding dudes 3500 for staging the fake hate crime. Now, I'm seeing reports where they said he paid them $3,500 each. No, 3500 total for two guys to split. So you're talking about 1750 I mean... What are we doing? A, a cheapskate and an idiot because he wrote them a check for the money. A check. <laughs> I mean, this kind of goes to my point about this guy just being a dummy. I said that before. World's dumbest criminal. Not a street guy at all because anybody that's doing any kind of dirt would know you don't write a check. I mean, that's paper trail all day long. The police can easily go to a bank and subpoena that. They don't even got, they can just find that. Like, that's so simple. They can log on to your account and get that easily. That's not really no deep thing. He signed a check with his own name on it. He may as well have written why he was writing the check in the memo line. Because, I mean, the police, if, if they see that, then it's easy to be like, okay, one and one is two, you know. And also in the press conference, they saw the Nigerian guys from their house to Jesse's house through a bunch of cameras from, from the police cameras in the sky to private citizens cameras to Uber drivers cameras. It, they had them just, just easy. And they found footage from a beauty supply store where the guys bought a red hat, uh, the ski mask, the gloves, all of that in full 1080p HD quality. I was surprised because the picture of them on the side of the road that we saw at first was real grainy. You didn't know who it was, but this right here, you see him in live, full color, action, all of that. So there's no doubt that this was a scheme. You also had the phone records. Jesse was calling these guys one hour before the actual uh, so-called hate crime attack, an hour after the attack, and then he was calling them while they were in Nigeria. 
They fled to Nigeria hours after the so-called attack, and they came back two weeks later. During that whole period of time, they were piecing the case together. So they knew that they were in Nigeria, and they knew when they would be coming back. So as soon as they got off the plane, the police were like, come with us. They come to the station. They're in custody for 48 hours. On a 47 hour, that's when they decided to snitch. Because they know if they don't tell right now while they're in custody and the police build the case, it's a wrap for them. It's going to be hate crime charges. It's going to be all kind of stuff. Now, the federals are also involved here, which makes it complicated because he may get off of the initial crime, the, well, the, the second crime, actually. But the first one we heard about, which was the fake hate crime, he may get off of that. Maybe, maybe, maybe he may get, a, you know, he may pay restitution, uh, give an apology or something like that. But the fake letter with the white substance and the magazine cutouts, uh, you talking about uh, a federal offense. It could be considered domestic terrorism under the Patriot Act. We're talking about bit level government. Who is he going to snitch on to get out of that? Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, could they be involved? Who else is involved with this whole situation that could be above Justice Smollett's pay grade? Okay, because there was a rope involved. Why would you include a rope? Kamala Harris and Cory Booker have an anti-lynching bill in the government right now that's kind of sitting there. It passed the Senate, but it did not pass the House yet. And it's been there for a year. So could they be involved? I have no idea, but... Cory Booker did promote that during the whole situation. So if he snitches, it'd have to be on them. But he doesn't want to do that because now you're getting into some, you know, uh, you know, day of the jackal. You're getting into a whole different ball game. So you don't want to do that. Trump tweeted about this, and I placed that on the screen before you. And some would say, why would Trump get involved? This is kind of a petty issue. He has bigger fish to fry. But what you may not understand is that this is very important because he's putting people's lives in danger. Somebody got a gun pulled on them recently because of their MAGA hat. OK, and it wouldn't be the first time you've seen plenty of Trump supporters get beat up. Uh, seriously, I seen people get shot over the MAGA hat. You don't want to have guys like Jesse be out here stoking that hatred, stoking that violence, poking at people's soft points, poking at people's you know, insecurity, sensitivities. You don't want that kind of stuff. All for more money. It ain't because he's trying to be some kind of freedom fighter. He was just trying to fight for his people. You know, it wasn't even about that. It was about, I don't make enough money on Empire. I want to get some more. I'm making 1.2 million a year. Maybe I want to get 5 million a year. Okay. So it, it wasn't even about some kind of greater fight. It wasn't about nothing other than to get money. Same as Colin Kaepernick talking about, yeah, I'm fighting for the people, black and them proud, all this, that, and the third. I'm wearing my afro out big under my football helmet, all that kind of stuff. Okay? It's really about money. Selling out of court with a confidentiality agreement for $80 million from the NFL. Come on, man. It's all about cash. Let's keep it all the way real. So this guy should go under the jail, in my humble opinion. He's facing 10 to 15 years for the federal charge if that happens. For this charge, he may get off. I hope he doesn't. The Chicago superintendent kind of disappointed me at the end talking about, well, I think he should just, you know, give an apology and pay money, all this that and the third. Now, to be fair, he was asked what, what he think the ultimate sentence would be or a fair sentence would be. Maybe he can't say jail because that can be potentially poison the jury pool. I'm not really sure how that goes, but if he thinks that it should just be a, a fine and apology, that's weak, that's soft, that's bogus. It definitely should be jail. You didn't tie up people's resources. You didn't put people's lives on the line. You had people come out to defend you. Now, one thing I will say as I close is that it won't be this big groundswell of support like many think it may be because the LGBT community and the black community are upset with Jesse because he lied if it were an actual real thing then they'd be on they'd be right there with him black and proud you know all this and that they'd be with him but now since he lied to try and get more cash for himself and he almost threw people under the bus that had nothing to do with it not they they're good they're good now so that's pretty much it one more thing 
This is not his first time being in court dealing with the police. He had a DUI in California in 2007. And when he had a DUI, he gave a fake name. He gave his brother's name, snitched on him, tried to get his life ruined. He only got probation for that. So is he still in probation right now? I, I doubt it. But he has a prior offense already. Okay, so if he got probation, did he plead to a felony? Like, what was the actual deal there? He has a bond hearing at about 2.30 p.m. Central Time. Hopefully, he gets remanded in the custody. No bail because he may be a flight risk. He already sent them to Nigerian guys back to Nigeria for two weeks to have everything cool down. Will he leave the country himself? He's recognizable, so he might not be able to do that, but we'll see. So that is pretty much all I got. Again, the full press conference is in the box below if you want to check it out for yourself. But what do you think? Do you think Jesse should go to the penitentiary? If so, why? Is it a big deal? If so, why? It's not a big deal. I've seen some say that we should ignore this. It's not really a big deal. But this ain't even about Jesse at this point anymore. It stopped being about him a long time ago, honestly, in my humble opinion. It's about all the fake hate crimes, all the hoaxes, and it's about those who are actual victims of hate crimes who are going to be seen now with a lens of doubt. A little bit of, well, I don't know if it was really something that happened to him. Maybe it did. Maybe it didn't. We can't have that be the case. If you are a true victim, you should be treated as such. Guys like Jesse Smollett should not be poisoning people's minds. But unfortunately, just by human nature, he's going to do that. It's little boy cry wolf all over again. So whatever your comments are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them.